Hello comrades, my name is Fritz and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program for the start of a new modded career mode Let's Play series. Today the Kerbal Race takes its first tentative steps out towards its new horizons. So without further ado, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, blast off! <laughs> Right, we're back, and we are going up straight as an arrow towards, of course, the surface of the moon. We're starting in immediate res in career mode, so no faffing about with silly little contracts at the beginning of the game. We're diving straight in, and we are not looking back one bit. Steepening out the ascent trajectory, and hot rockets, particle effects, and KW rocketry are providing us with some spectacular views of today's launch. Jebediah at the helm, as ever. And 43 kilometers. As you can see, I'm experimenting with remote tech, satellite network systems. That's not going too well. I will be fiddling around with that. I have been deleting a couple of mods, including environmental visual enhancements, because that was eating through my processing power and causing a bit of a memory leak. So I've replaced that with Planet Shine, which is less resource intensive, but should likewise be just about okay. Burning for orbit. One thousand four hundred meters per second. Planet Shine, as you can see, illuminating the bottom of our spacecraft. Something called the albedo effect, reflecting the light off the surface of the planet. Textbook. I don't even know if my audio is too loud, so I'm gonna watch this segment back and then fiddle with stuff as I go along. Um, ooh, passing up the apoapsis. That's not great. Luckily, I'm a engine here, the KW Rocketry Tier 1 workhorse. With Wildcat 5, I'll turn down Chatterer. There we go. Hit the prograde vector nice and hard. Keep it on the center. And circularize in five, four, three, two, one. There we have it. How much fuel do we have in these outer tanks? Quite a significant amount. Right. I'll see you when we are ready to burn for the moon. Okay, the moon is about to pop over the horizon and in a particularly philosophical mood right now because the game looks incredibly beautiful. As I said, I'm running Planet Shine and the reflections that I'm getting off the surface of the planet onto the spaceship do make it quite a sight to behold. Um, I dropped the music volume a bit because I got the impression it was a bit too loud in my headphones, so... I drop that, that should be fine. And I think we are officially ready to go. Uh, technical difficulties, I think, at the beginning of this new series. A series which I'm actually very, very excited about. Because it sees the return of Kerbal Space Program after our accidental, well, our, I say my incompetence and accidental final deletion. And something I'm also very pleased about, because it's a game that I very much enjoy, as I'm sure you will have guessed by now. 
So that's that, Kerbal Space Program, New Horizons modded career mode series, I'll be posting a mod list up on my Facebook page and maybe on, actually no, I can't post it on Twitter because I can't condense all my mods into um, less than or equal to 140 characters, so yeah, that's one small drawback, but I will eventually get round to doing that. I think we've packed way too much fuel for this mission, but better to be safe than sorry. So, head off right on the 90, suck it in like so, get ready to jettison these fuel tanks. 30 units, look at the map. God, my Kerbin SOI is a mess with all of these satellite projects. Let's give it some welly. Half a million, that's fine, we'll um, deal with that in a second. Go. Try to ditch a whole load of mass, and just be careful. Oh, it's suddenly okay. Pop. Textbook. Now, I'm not entirely sure whether I've got um, something for. Actually, if I cut the throttle here. Wait, no. Okay, keep going. God, all these satellites. I thought that was the orbit of the moon for a second. Can we set that as target? See if we can't get an encounter. And here it comes. Whoa, okay. What I've just realised is that we... K the engines on KW Rocketry... K oh, I can't speak today. The engines on KW Rocketry don't shut down instantly. There is a, a kind of a spool down time that we need to take into account, so... Just bear that in mind for the next time we do any aggressive manoeuvring. Still, let's head for the moon! Planet Kerbin slips away. And into Muna SOI. Ooh, this is a great little slingshot we've got going here. I've done some Muna orbital science, so this is kind of phase two of the Muna excursion, which is obviously to attempt a landing. So, I've packed a heck of a lot of science equipment, very expensive science equipment on here, so I better make sure that I'm able to bring most of that back. Although, in truth, in terms of the cost impacts of this rocket, it's the middle stage that's going to hit us the hardest, the transfer stage. Because we're in orbit and, well, we can't use the parachutes to get us back because we're not on a suborbital trajectory. But that's fine. We aren't going to lose a hell of a lot. We're, we're essentially coming to a point where all we're doing is paying for the fuel. Rather than the parts, for the most part. If you pardon the pun. And... Head over to the retrograde marker. Spill up the engines. The Wildcat 5 does the work nicely. I mean, in comparison to the LVT-45, the the stock engine that's the most similar to this is the same price, but we have a higher ISP and a higher thrust. So that's a, a no-brainer to my mind. We can go straight in for a landing, I think. I don't see why you wouldn't... Oh, oh we are coming in hot, I have to say. Let's, uh, let's kill our thrust there. There goes the transfer stage. Whack it like you mean business, turn on the SAS. And whoa, that went for miles. Look at it go. Deploying the landing legs, we have to make sure we land pretty flat, because we haven't got 
a great deal of stability. Um, I'm going to slowly use the LB-909 to shallow out our descent. Oh my god, right, okay. This is not good, this is not good at all. We are coming in quite close. Uh, that's a rather big crater. Can I see my shadow? Can I see my shadow? This is getting hairy. 270 meters per second. We might just be able to kill off our velocity. Uh, let's level it out. Oh my god. Oh dear. We're gonna have to head in for a really low pass here. Hold on to your hats. See your hat is pretty firmly attached though. Pull up. Oh Nelly. This isn't good. This is not good. Here we come. Right. Brace for impact. We should have quite a good, uh... Well, actually, we're doing well. We're doing well. Okay, we're not going down anymore. There goes the transfer stage. <laughs> we are literally zipping right along the ground. Drop the throttle. And we're going up again. Christ. I hope this isn't going to be another bungled landing. Getting ready to slow down. 20 meters per second. We came barreling along there. And cut. Good stuff. And, oh, have I rebound the keys? I probably have. Because I keep getting that message when, uh, yeah. Four... Three. Slowly does it, slowly does it, slowly does it, and touchdown! Jeb is on the moon. Quick save here. Okay, that was interesting. Anyway, yes, we made it to the moon. After quite a hairy descent. Let's do that. 20 science, if we bring it back, which we invariably will. Trying out this dynamic, dynamic, I'll, no, sorry, the magneto magnetometer widget. Extend! Yoink! Log magnetometer data. Toggle that. Analyze the surface. Um. Ooh, it's, it glows red. Okay. Ah, uh -huh. yes. Log the temperature. And that's all the new science stuff. So let's observe the mystery goo, as we always do, and then we'll follow that up with a materials bay. 100 science. Airlock. Space. Whoa, okay, that's not good. Oh dear. I can hear him breathing, which is disconcerting. Plant flag. I've actually used my YouTube symbol for this. This is pretty cool. Oh, yes. Ooh, building up a lot of speed sideways, obviously. Um, that perhaps is at 9.4 kilometers, just high enough to avoid the mountains. 
and low enough so that we don't avoid using too much fuel. And fast enough, actually, a low orbit is naturally faster, according to the laws of physics. So, once again, we're using less fuel to do our transfer burn back to Kerbin, because we are already in possession of quite a significant amount of speed. Time warping. Big speed. And... Orbit. There we have it, a perfect girdle around the surface of the moon. Okay, we are really shifting now. Uh, doing the burn, take us into Kerbin's sphere of influence once again. Taking Jebediah Kerbin back home after this one day mission. Very short mission in terms of um, real time standards. I mean, it takes about three days to get to the moon in real life. But this is obviously not real life, and the rocket trail from that little LV-909 is pretty incredible. And we've left the lunar orbit, as you can see. 85 meters per second to go. Very nice. It's been a mission that has gone pretty much without a hitch, apart from that crazy descent that we just had. Other than that... Um, two kilometers. Okay, I can probably live with that. Still, we are definitely going home. Let's bid goodbye to the moon, and well, there we have it. We're coming right up behind our original landing spot. Farewell. Let's go home. Deploy the landing legs. Scary stuff. So yeah, we should get some good returns from the D-Magic orbital science shenanigans that we had going. And that should fulfill quite a lot of the contracts that I originally had on hand. So in that case we can progress very quickly with our space program. And this ship is actually fundamentally balanced. As you can see it's holding itself quite nicely on the retrograde marker without any assistance from myself. As you can see by the control inputs in the bottom left. Eight hundred meters per second slowing down quite quickly. It's time warp and get ourselves down to the ground. Pretty sharpish. And splash down. That was perfect. Let's head back to R and D. And, wow, 328 science earned from that mission alone. We've 500 in total, we've got 633 funds as they stand now. 2 XP! So you can see the Space Center, I know it's dark, but you can see it's not, it doesn't look like it did in the previous series. That's because with the new career mode that was introduced in beta, and still, it, and still is implemented in 1.0, which came out in April 27th, um, you basically have to upgrade your buildings with funds, and we are pretty much at the bottom tier. I've got tier 2 launch pad, VAB, and tracking station, and astronaut complex, but the rest of it is pretty bog standard, so we're going to be doing that, and upgrading the buildings as we go along. So, flight control we can research. And then that will take us into this tier, specialised construction and such like, but we can't actually explore that until we've got more than a hundred... Well, until we can explore and upgrade the R&D facility, which costs 510,000. Which won't leave us with the massive amounts of money to do the rest of our missions. 
which won't be that good. So we're going to have to come up with a strategy and work our way through it. But in the meantime, that's been episode one of New Horizons modded career mode series. My name is Fritz, and I will, of course, see you next time.